Okay, good evening, everyone. I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. I can't go live today, but it's okay. We will continue with this uh, closing submit by Dr. Darren Chua. So today we are very privileged to have Dr. Darren Chua with us. He's an inspirational guest speaker with us. And uh, he's a young, outstanding Singaporean successful entrepreneur. He's the founder of Mindset Transformation Clinic. He's also the founder of Porter's Clay Education. He's an international inspirational speaker, an author, an edupreneur, and also a national para-athlete and champion for the youth and for all of us that are differently able. All right. So he's also an MBBS doctor. Today, his sharing is on creating sustainability in pursuit of wellness. So uh, the hypnosis, mental and emotional wellness is a topic that has caught on recently and it is about time too. However, we need to create sustainability in these endeavors to ensure longevity in these pursuits. So in this closing address, Dr. Darren Chua will talk about sustainability as a choice and not as a trend. If wellness as the state of being rather than just health, which is the state of the body. So it's all about rich choice that goes beyond health, health trends to wellness sustainability. So now we are going to welcome Dr. Darren Chua. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I stop share. Thank you, Veronica. Uh, You're welcome, Dr. Darren. Go ahead. Very much appreciated. And, and I just want to thank everybody for, for, for being here this evening. Um, thank Veronica once again for inviting me to this um, uh, evening's sharing session. I, I think this whole idea of this one, one month submit is really very, very useful for everybody. I, I think it really will be able to reach out to a lot of people uh, who a lot of times just focus a lot on health. But while health is important, I, I really think that, and I, every, and I think that everybody in this room understands that really health is not everything, right? As an individual, what we really want is true wellness. And I think today we will be talking about that, right? How to actually reach to a state of wellness and more importantly, how do we have sustainability in having that wellness? Before we start though, I just want to have a simple question and I just want to ask everybody um, to ask, what are the three keys of wellness? What are the three keys of wellness? And if everybody can just think about it, um, if everybody can just also answer this question to this uh, URL, www.menti.com, using this code, 96047731, and answer this question. What are the three keys to wellness? Can I just maybe give about 30 seconds for everyone to just answer this question? That there is no need to be too, too in-depth about, about the thought process, but, but just your, your first of thought. Huh? Immediately, when you are asked this question, what are the three keys? Uh, what are your first thoughts? I, I just want to have a brief idea, have a brief understanding of what are everybody's thoughts with regards to this question. So what are the three keys to wellness? To That's right. Yeah. All right. You don't have to think about what other people think. Uh, it's yeah. you. To yeah. know what are the three keys? So just key in um, the answer and then submit. And once you submit, we'll consolidate all the answers and show you later. Okay. So every one of you submit. Uh, then we will have 36 answers inside there. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So all of you participate, then we will have a variety of answers. Because to everyone is different. Huh? To me, it's sleep well, eat well, play well. <laughs> I don't know how to submit, Miss Waron. Uh, no, so you just go to www.menti.com. Then there is a box there to ask you for the code. You just key in the code, the, right. the question will come up. 
The question will come on up. On the computer? On the computer? No, on, if you are using handphone, you are using computer, it doesn't matter. You just go to a browser. A URL? Yeah. A URL that basically... You key in www.menti.com. You can see the box there. You just key in the code. Okay, now we can uh, take a look at some of the answers, yeah? All right, sustainability, calm mind, good nutrition, good sleep, happiness, sleep well, eat well, resting, good health, good relationship, positive thoughts, positive feelings. Yeah. And, Any and, more? And so these this are all the, the, the answers from, from you, you know. Uh, everybody, uh, these are your thoughts when it comes to, to wellness, right? And, and it seems that when it comes to wellness, um, there is a, a variety of answers from everybody, yeah. Um, so good health is the biggest there. Yeah, it, it seems that yeah. So so the bigger the bigger the the, the the word it means that the more numbers are the more people are actually in a way writing the same uh, thing, right? So in other words, it, it means that most likely there are two or three person that actually also wrote good health, yeah. Has everybody uh, written your answer already? Yeah, so I think most likely this is the answers that we're having. Good. And, and so the question now is this. The question is, is wellness the same as health? Is, is wellness the same as health? And the reason why I'm asking this question is because again, if we are looking at this, uh, what is called a, a word cloud, um, the cloud that is the biggest right now, it's the word that is called good health. And so my question to everybody and for everybody to think about right now is to ask yourself, is good health equivalent? Is good health equals to wellness, all right? And, and, and I think this is something that I would like to actually talk about and to also to, 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 to ask everybody to think about um, over the next maybe 30 minutes as we uh, do this sharing together, yeah? Let me continue onto my slides. But before I continue, I would just like to also share a little bit about uh, my story, right? So, I am currently aged 44. Um, I was, of course, very, very active when I was young. Um, very active, but I wasn't very relatively... I, I didn't really like to exercise because when I was young, I, I didn't like to sweat a lot, right? But I was healthy. I didn't like to exercise, but I was very active. And so, right, my CCAs was also quite varied. I was very, very... Um, popular with friends. I was also in a way very, very active when I uh, uh, go out with friends, have a, lot, have a lot of activities with them. And when it comes to, when it comes to my schoolwork, I was also in a way one of the uh, better few when it comes to uh, class activities, schoolwork. And it was actually very easy for me to, to score well uh, to a point whereby actually I went into medical school in the year 1995, all right? And, and when I graduated from medical school in the year 2000, my dream was to be a surgeon, uh, to be a neurosurgeon. And, and, and that was actually at that point in time in the year 2000 was all that I wanted to do, right? I, I spent so many, uh, so much time and effort to, 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 to study, uh, to, to do so much good work to actually like just to go into medical school. And, and, and at the end of the day, what I wanted to do in the year 2000 was just to carry on and to be a surgeon. Because at that point in time, uh, I, I just like to be um, in the uh, surgical theater. Uh, I like the excitement and, and, the, and the thrill of actually uh, being able to help someone through, through, through surgery. Uh, so I graduated. Uh, my, my first day of work was going to be 2nd May, 2000. I, I still remember um, prior to, to that, prior to the first day of work on the 2nd of May, 
2000, I was actually at home playing computer game. And, and the reason why I was playing computer game was actually very simple, right? Um, I was going to work as a, as a doctor. Life was going to be very, very busy. Life was going to be very active. Um, I wouldn't have actually much time for myself anymore. So I thought, you know, let's just maybe spend, spend the whole day playing computer game. And, and also I remembered that very same day in the evening, I was going uh, for my d and And that very evening, that d and I was going to be the MC as well. So I just thought, you know, just, just have some downtime before I, in a way, uh, have some uh, pleasant time with my friends. Um, in the evening at about maybe four o'clock, something strange happened to me. And that was the right side of my visual field went completely black, went completely dark. In other words, at that point, I wasn't able to see half of my visual field. I was literally half blind. And, but as a doctor, right, most of us are always thought whenever you are in an emergency, whenever you are in a situation, never, never panic, right? Um, rather than panic, always think through the various possibilities and work work it out. And so at the point in time, I was just wondering, okay, let's not uh, be too panicky. Let's just go back to my room and just have a rest. Maybe, maybe, maybe I just was playing too much computer games. And so I walked very slowly back to my room. I sat down and then that was where the headaches came in. Uh, and, and, and those headaches, I can still remember still 20 years ago, the worst headaches that I've ever felt in my life, right? Those, the headaches were basically pounding headaches Every second, it was pounding to my head, um, stronger, faster, and heavier. And, and what was happening at that point in time was in my head, this was happening. Uh, there was basically a rush of blood that was basically coming into my brain because there was a blood vessel that was that has burst in my brain. Uh, literally, I was having a stroke. Of course, at that point in time, uh, I didn't know that. At that point in time, I was 24 years old, and, and to me, having a stroke at 24 years old was just quite ridiculous, right? I mean, even as a doctor, I would tell you that uh, having a stroke at 24 years old is actually pretty, pretty rare, and, and so I wasn't even thinking about it. I was just wondering, you know, why is this headache uh, so severe? But uh, I wasn't really thinking much about trying to find a diagnosis. More importantly, I was just trying to control my emotions, and just really trying to find a way out of that situation because nobody was at home. I was, only, I was the only one at home. My parents were away on a cruise. My sister was with a friend and, and I knew that I needed help because the, 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 the pain, the headaches was so severe that I wasn't, I wasn't even able to sort of like to, to, to walk around much. And, and so I decided to actually call a friend, to call a friend to in a way maybe to ask her to, uh, pick me up so that we can go to a clinic, go to the hospital to maybe to just to see what was wrong with my condition at that point in time. And so um, I, I called a friend. She said, yes, she will pick me up and then bring me to the nearest uh, clinic, nearest hospital. Um, we put on the phone and then three weeks, uh, three minutes later, four minutes later, I remembered her calling me back and then she was telling me that basically there is this huge jam in the PIE and, and there is no way that she can get me in time. So in other words, what she suggested was that maybe she can get me, uh, uh, give me an ambulance, and then that ambulance can then pick me up and then bring me to the, uh, give, bring me to the, to the hospital. And I said, sure, sure, uh, do whatever you have to do, but please try and help me. Uh, I, I, I turned off the phone and, and, and being a 24 year old young man, I, I was just thinking to myself, you know, what is it that I can do for myself to help myself, right? I, I was thinking, you know, I'm sure there was something that I can do, given the fact that I am a medical doctor, given the fact that I am, in a way, relatively quite smart, uh, given the fact that I am fit and able, surely there is something that I can do for myself to get myself out of this situation. So, out of my ingenuity, I thought, you know, maybe I'll just take my keys and I'll just open the front door. I was thinking the faster I get the front door open, the faster the ambulance team can get to me. To me, that seemed to be a very logical kind of reasoning. So I took the bunch of keys 
and I stood up to walk towards the front door. But the minute I stood up, I fell down. And that was when I realized I was having a stroke because half of my right side of my body, I was completely, uh, in a way, uh, uh, emotion, uh, uh, motionless. Uh, uh, there was no strength whatsoever on the right side of my body. Uh, that was when I realized that I was having a stroke, but yet I was still very persistent in trying to make sure that I can go to the front door, to open the front door, to help myself to get the ambulance key, uh, team to help me. And so I was crawling and crawling and crawling to the front door. The bunch of keys was still in my hand. When I reached the front door, I took the bunch of keys and trying to match the key to the front door and realized that I couldn't even recognize what key was for what door. And that was when I realized how devastating the stroke was, uh, 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 how devastating the stroke was to my brain. Uh, I, I wasn't even able to recognize the keys that I used to have, the, the kind of keys that I was so familiar with uh, compared to, 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 to a 24-year-old who was a medical doctor, compared to a 24-year-old who used to score uh, uh, very high for his exams, compared to someone who was able to do very well in his CCAs. For the, for, for the first time in my life, I was actually completely helpless, right? And so I had to crawl all the way back and just in a way wait it out, you know? And, and so while the, while, the, while the headaches were just getting worse and worse and worse, I had, I, I had to wait out for another 10 to 15 minutes before the ambulance team come to me and in a way uh, rescue me and bring me to the, to, to the, to the, to the NUH hospital. The minute I was in the ambulance, I backed out. Three weeks later, I woke up. And when I woke up, I realized that my, complete, my, my hair was complete, my head was completely shaved. One third of my skull was carved away. And the reason why they had to carve one third of my skull away was that the only emergency uh, surgery that they could do at that point in time, the only thing that the surgeons could do was just to, in a way, take out the skull, remove all the blood, and to, in a way, re reduce the pressure, right? Reduce the pressure and allow the brain to heal by itself, right? I wasn't able to speak. I wasn't able to see half of the visual field. I wasn't able to move my entire body. And, and that was how um, Darren, Darren Chua, me, just graduating from, uh, from, 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 from doctoring, uh, uh, began, began my, my, my medical career. I, I began my medical career as actually as a, as a victim, as a, as, a, as, a, as a stroke survivor. And so at this point in time, um, just a quick casual question, and, and that is, uh, what was my first emotion do you think uh, it was when I woke up from my sort of coma? Uh, anybody uh, have any uh, thought about that? What, what do you think was my first emotion when I woke up from my coma? Do you want to type fear? Yeah, you can type fear. You can type or, or you can even just uh, unmute and yourself. Just, yeah, say it. Yeah. yeah. What do you think was Dr. Darren's um, first em emotion? Yeah, correct. George says loss. Say again. Disorientated loss. and don't this know what is happening in the world. Yeah. yeah. Any, anybody else? Uh, happiness. Happiness. Well, okay. Uh, uh, Will, right? Yes. Uh, why, why, why do you think, I, uh, why, why do you say that? Um, by being here. Yeah. I, I actually, when I, when, I, when I woke up, my, my first emotion was actually pure joy. You know, I, I was actually very happy that I was actually still alive. Um, uh, because if you all can remember, the, my, pre my previous uh, emotion, my previous sensation was that, was that of pain, was that of uh, disorientation uh, uh, at home, right? But right when I woke up, it was actually right, there was, it was the fact that I was still alive, you know, I was actually just very, very happy and just very, very full of joy. Um, but then the second second was very different. 
second number two, second number three, second number four was very different because I was also able to see my friends, my friends who was my age, doing the work that I was supposed to do. You know, I could see my friends doing uh, the work as a houseman. I, I could see my friends going around uh, helping the patients. And I was wondering, you know, those, that is the work that I was supposed to do as a doctor. Uh, I, could, I, I could remember my friends, some of them, um, uh, I, was, I, I was thinking to myself, uh, I, you, uh, I, I usually in a way uh, can, uh, can, can, can peer, peer myself as them. In other words, I, 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 I look myself as to them as peers. And, 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 for, and, and at that point in time, in a way, I was the victim and they were the doctors. And to me, I just felt very, very uh, jealous. I felt very angry. I felt very... Uh, why, how come like that? You know, uh, why have things turned out to be this way? And, and, and so I actually asked that question to myself for about two weeks, three weeks, right? And, and, and every day I was just sinking in into deeper uh, depression, sinking, in, sinking in into deeper, deeper, uh, maybe even even hate for myself, right? You know, asking for myself, you know, why am I in this state? You know, um, and I still, and, and and I remembered uh, all this changed in about the second week or the third week into the hospital stay. And, and I remembered that evening, uh, in a very, very hot evening, very, very warm evening, I was trying to, in a way, turn on the uh, fan. Turn on the fan so that in a way there can be some circulation in the, in the air. But because of my body, I couldn't move my body. I wasn't able to, in a way, switch on the fan, even though I could see the switch. That is just in front of me. Um, there was no nurse around. I wasn't able to speak at that point in time. And so even though I was able to see the switch, even though I was able to actually to speak out, but I wasn't able to, I, I, realized, I, I realized that at that point in time, I was actually a prisoner trapped within my own body. You know, um, I, wasn't, I wasn't able to even to help myself to just to turn on the fan when I was just so near to that, to that, to that, to that, to the fan switch. And I realized that, you know, I was a prisoner trapped within my own body. But the reason I thought to that to myself, I also realized that actually I was a prisoner of hope. Because I realized that, right, the good thing about stroke is that a stroke condition is perhaps maybe, right, that stroke condition at a point in time is perhaps maybe the worst situation that we have had at that point in time. The next day after, the week after, the month after is actually opportunities for, for me to get better. My body can get better. My, 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 my physical state can get better. My emotional state can get better as long as I have the will to get myself out of it, right? I mean, there are many, many other conditions whereby the body deteriorates but for mine, mine is different, you know, as a stroke survivor, I can actually get better. And I realized that, you know, if I want to get better, then I have to do something about it myself. And, and that is where I decided, you know, every day in the morning, I will do my walks. Every afternoon, I will do my hand exercises. And then every evening, I will, I will do my reading exercises. I will start to read, I will start to speak slowly. And, and, and so by, by the end of the first year, by the end of the second year, you know, I was already going to the Singapore Medical Council and asking them, you know, when can I go back to serve as a doctor again? And every year when I ask them that question, every year Singapore Medical Council uh, tells me the same answer. They say that no, cannot. I say quite cannot. The same answer is because they are just afraid that if there is any emergency in the hospital, I wouldn't be able to respond to any, uh, to that emergency. And, and, and that question and, and, and that statement, the answer, I was, I was never able to sort of like answer back because it is true that at the point in time, I was just in a way slow. I was in a way um, relatively weak. And, and, and so, right, it is true that if I was in the hospital working as a doctor, if there were any emergencies, um, I, I, I cannot uh, in, in full conscience say that I can actually like, really be of help to a patient. And so in, in the third year, in the fourth year, I decided, you know, uh, Darren, rather than continue, continuing doing uh, rehab, I still have to take care of my parents. My parents were not getting any young, younger. 
I had to, in a way, I had a responsibility to my parents as well. That's so why I said, well, why don't I, in a way, start work first? Um, and, and, and the work that I thought of was just as a healthcare administrator, right? I, I thought that, you know, I still wanted to be in healthcare. So somehow or another, I just thought that, you know, I spent five years studying as a doctor, uh, the kind of work that I wanted to be in naturally should be in healthcare. And, and so I thought that, you know, I would be a healthcare administrator. But working as a healthcare administrator was killing me inside because the reason why I wanted to be a doctor was because I wanted to be of service to the people around me. I wanted to reach out and touch people. But being a healthcare administrator, I was just doing work in a way behind a desktop. And, 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 and I didn't like that kind of work. And, and so I was really struggling and I was trying to figure out what am I to do for the rest of my life. You know, at that point, I was just 26, 27. So I, I knew that I still have a lot of good times uh, uh, the, uh, for me, right? I, I know that I can still contribute to, to the world, but I just needed to find out how can I contribute to the world. So I decided to, in a way, um, take a stipend, um, study, uh, study for my master's program, at the same time also to take time off to think about this question, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? And, and it was during this period where I realized that there is a difference between our job and our work, right? Our job gives us our income, but our work gives us our purpose. Our job gives us our 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 our, 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 our job. We are able to, in a way, give us our remuneration, uh, our retirement, but our work is the one that actually right uh, gives us our purpose in life. Right? Our work is our employment. Our work, our job is our employment. Our work is our deployment, right? Using our gifts and talents to deploy ourselves in the service of others. And, and, and when I realized the, the difference between a work and my job, uh, it, it was very clear for me, right? I, I had to get out uh, uh, from my administrative role and in a way come out and do something that I can be of service to the people. And that was when I started my own uh, uh, learning center, when I started my... Uh, my, started my other businesses, right? Um, at, at this point, I, I just wanted to, in a way, um, come back to this idea about wellness. There is a difference between uh, health and wellness. And, and I think we need to distinguish between these two words, right? Um, everybody wants to be good health and there's nothing wrong with it, right? But I think what is more important is that we all need to be we, we all need to have wellness, good, good wellness, right? And, and what does wellness um, simplify, right? So there are actually eight elements of wellness, right? The eight elements of wellness includes things like um, social, uh, our social wellness, our spiritual wellness, right? Uh, things like our uh, occupation, things like our um, emotional, environmental, financial intelligence, right? Uh, there are eight elements of, of, of wellness, but I, I know that sometimes having the eight elements of wellness, sometimes it's just too much for us to remember uh, uh, at, at the same time, right? And so what I try to do is to try and tell people that actually, right, you can reduce the eight elements of wellness into four factors, right? And I call these four factors, the rich factors, right? The, the first rich factors is the R factor, right? Which is basically about resources. And the resources basically talks about our, our finance. It talks about our intelligence. Uh, intelligence doesn't talk about our, our, our degree, yeah? No, uh, intelligence talks about our ideas that we have. It talks about uh, how we translate our ideas into something that is, um, that is, that is real and, and really, uh, that, that, that we can contribute to people, right? So that's our, uh, I, I refers to our influence, influence, it refers to our uh, environment, uh, influence to the environment, the things around us. Influence refers to uh, the so to society, to the social, to the people around us. C refers to the cons um, consisting of um, our, uh, in, uh, things that we are unable to see, right? Consisting of things that are unable to see, consisting of things that are in a way in intangible, right? Mm -hmm things that are in a way spiritual, right? This would be things like of C and basically H, 
So H would be things like your physical state, like your emotional state, uh, things like your, uh, yeah. So, so basically, right, if you do R, I, C, H, right, we have basically, right, this, this four rich uh, factors that ultimately, right, basically is about what wellness is, right? If we want to be, have, if, if we want to have wellness, we need to have this so-called four rich factors. Ultimately, wellness is about a mindset, right? A mindset that's able to, to, to give us um, self-influence, right? The self-influence that is capable of influencing others through inspiration motivated by passion, right? We need to be passionate about what we are doing, generated by a vision, produced by a conviction, and ignited by a purpose. And, and ultimately, this is what wellness is able to give us, right? Wellness is more than just health. Wellness is actually right about all of these factors all joined in together. Okay. And so it comes back to the, the, our, our question, right? Creating sustainability. What exactly then is sustainability? Does, does, does anybody uh, want to try and, and, and Try a shot at this. Uh, what, what, what exactly is sustainability? Is, is sustainability a, a form of technology? Is sustainability a, a form of uh, resources to use? I mean, uh, how can we, how should we think about sustainability? How can we be sustainable? How should we be, how should we think about sustainability? Consistency. Consistency, all right. Anybody else? Having it as part of your lifestyle. Lifestyle, okay. Yep, that's good. All right, lifestyle. Yeah. One more, anybody? It's a kind of future-proof uh, approach to be able to support the current uh, generations and the future generations. Future-proof. All right. Okay. My my understanding is really sustainability is a choice, and, and the reason why I say that is. Uh, if we look at our, uh, our, our, our forefathers, when during the, let's say, agriculture uh, rev, uh, ev ev evolution, right? Uh, do you think of those, um, our forefathers, um, 100 years ago, a few hundred years ago, do you, do you think that they were sustainable? Do you, do you think that they were trying to be sustainable using the farms that they have? To me, I think that they, they were, right? They were, they were trying to be as sustainable as they can using whatever little that they have. The key to sustainability is about choices that we want to choose, right? Um, sustainability is not about uh, oh, uh, the, the technology that we have. It is not about the trends that we're trying to do. Sustainability ultimately is about the choices that we want to make for ourselves. Right? And, and so I think it is really very important, especially when it comes to our wellness, to decide on what is it that we want and then right, to live our life according to those choices that we want to, to make. Um, I, I decided to add in this slide because this, this, this is a pretty new slide and, and I'm not sure whether you all saw this. This, this. this came out, I think, two to three weeks ago. Uh, Singaporeans are unhappy. At the, uh, uh, I think we are the unhappiest people when it comes to the workforce, right? Uh, I, I think this, this kind of data has been coming, to, uh, coming out uh, for very often, right? Uh, over the past few years, right? Singapore is apparently very, very unhappy people. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so in this data, which, which came out, I think, about two, three weeks ago, it says that Singaporeans are actually, right, the most unhappy people in the workforce. Uh, and not only that, you know, when it comes to uh, worries, Singaporeans uh, worry things about finances, we worry when it comes to physical health, we worry when it comes to mental health. Yeah. Um, my, my, my question again to everyone is, uh, what came first? All right? uh, cause and effect. Do you think unhappiness is a cause or do you think unhappiness is an effect? Right? Because our answer to this question actually right, will actually decide how we live our life, right? Um, is happiness or unhappiness uh, a cause or is unhappiness or happiness 
and effect, right? And, and, and my, my understanding to this is really to think about this story, right? And, and, and this story is actually uh, about the story of uh, story of ancient times, right? Um, I think in, in, in the 13th BC, uh, Moses was trying to lead uh, his people uh, to from Egypt all the way to to Canaan, right? And and from Egypt all the way to Canaan was was a, a one month journey, right? Uh, this is uh, and, and 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 this journey was uh, according to ancient uh, texts, right? According to ancient texts, this journey, which is supposed to be a one, about a one month journey. Um, God has, in a way, already told the, the told Moses to tell the people that, 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 that God will take care of them. God will, in a way, uh, uh, bring them through this journey to bring them to their promised land. But even though God sort of like promised them, uh, the, the, the people were still able to complain, right? Day in, day out, they were still complaining and complaining. And, and which is why I, I really believe, right, the human state, our human state inherently, um, we are unhappy because right, of the choices that we make. In, in other words, right, unhappiness is a cause. Unhappiness right, is not really a, a, an effect, which also means that right, happiness is also a cause. In other words, we decide to be happy today. We have to decide to be happy so that even though when bad things happen, uh, those bad things cannot affect our emotions. We still say that even though bad things happen, good things will still, in a way, come out of it, right? And which is why I, I, I am very, very of a strong belief that ultimately we need to, when it comes to wellness, take full control over it, right? Take full control over our uh, wellness, right? So four keys to create sustainability. The first one is really control over your wellness. The second one is to seek orientation with your values, priorities, as well as your goals. The fourth is your wellness is a mindset and not a quick fix. And I think this is very, very key, right? Wellness is a mindset and not a quick fix. And the last one is the wellness is a life, uh, living a life that is better, right? Wellness is not about living a life that is the best life possible. Wellness is about living a life that is better than yesterday, all right? Okay. If I were to put an acronym so that everybody can remember, then it is basically just C-O-M-B, uh, a comb. And so every day from today onwards, right? You comb your hair. Comb, right? Uh, as you comb your hair, uh, remember, uh, this is how you sustain your wellness, right? Comb, C-O-M-B, control, oriented mindset, as well as always know that fo focus on being better, rather than focus on being the best. Right? And, and, and so um, when, I, when, I, when I saw that, I saw that I had this Eureka moment, have this mindset shift, I, I decided to um, set up my own learning center. I, I, I also, in a way, um, gave, gave a talk, um, in a way, um, managed to influence the people. Um, um, because of my story, I, I think people were very impacted. I decided to be a motivation speaker, um, giving talks like uh, like this, uh, like like who I'm speaking to today, uh, telling everybody that ultimately, right, that the disability is only in time, that, that our choices is the one that, that, that make our destiny, right, uh, and not the things that's happening around us. Some of the things that I do, I also um, I also try and do things. And, and give back to the community uh, because ultimately I, I really believe that uh, many things have been given to me. I am very blessed that the fact that actually, despite of the severe stroke that I had, I am still able to contribute back into the community, right? And uh, I am currently a para athlete. Uh, we got the gold for Singapore in the ASEAN Games over in uh, back in 2015. Uh, I am a para. I, I am a Spartan race uh, athlete. Uh, I, I completed my first Spartan race in the 20, uh, in 2018. Um, 
and a time of six hours, 22 minutes. Yeah. Uh, these are also some of my other uh, things that I do uh, to, to give back to the community. And, and I said, right, I mean, a, a man is never completed uh, if he doesn't have a family. And that's, that, that's my lovely wife. And, and so really, I mean, I, I really believe that wellness is it, more than just about our health. Wellness is, is like I said, right, about, the, about having a rich uh, uh, framework, you know, resources, uh, influence, uh, um, con connected to, 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 uh, to, uh, to, to, to a God, uh, having understanding of our, of, of our humanity, of our physical state, of our emotions. Yeah? So, so this is really what I believe in. And so, again, I, I, I will end off this talk with another mentee, mentee poll. And, and this question is really, what are the three words that comes to mind after hearing this uh, keynote? So again, um, going to www.mentee.com and then this time adding in the code number 7453855. And then again, uh, we, can, we can all take a look at, at, at what are some of the takeaways that people have after today's session. Are we ready? Okay, so we have uh, we have mindset, we have uh, yeah, we have choices. Anybody else? So the mind over body is so important. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so so I think the I think the key the key takeaway is really about choices. Yeah, I, 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 and I agree with everyone. You know, it is really about to 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 understand wellness. It is really to understand that ultimately the choice is in your hands, right? The the choice is in our hands, right? Um, for us to in a way to to, to understand wellness completely, right? Is is to really to 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 know that choices that our choice is actually up to us. For us to make as well, yeah, great, yeah. sustainability mindset, yeah. yeah, all all great words uh, to use, yeah, all great words to use, yeah. yeah. And I just want to end off with the last slide. Sorry, actually, two more slides, yeah, two more slides, and and basically, the, the two slides is basically about generally. The thing that I do, uh, uh, I, 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 I do, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a keynote speaker, I, I, I do workshops, I'm, a, I'm also a coach. And, and, and when I do my uh, coaching, I, I always remind everybody that all of us are meant to be successful. Uh, all of us are meant to be successful. Nobody, right? We, we, not, none of us are born in this world as a failure. Uh, so I, I, I always believe in that. Uh, I, I always tell my uh, participants, I always tell my, my, my clients that you, you need to believe that when you are born, all of us are born for success. None of us are born to fail, right? However, over the course of time, because of the choices that we make, because of the, 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 the influence that we have, sometimes right, uh, things may happen that, 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 may, that, may, that, that, may, that may make life very difficult to succeed. And that is why coaching sometimes helps. 
right? So a coach can then help you to help you to orientate, to help you to, to reach your goals better. But the only way to, to do this properly is to make sure that you find a coach that can, in a way, bring you from your current state to your, in a way, your preferred state, right? Mm -hmm. So I have a, a six months program, one-to-one, um, -one, uh, and, it, and it's completely refundable. Again, like I said, TNC. But um, I, I, I am someone who, who really believes that, you know, if I really cannot help you, then in a way, I, I actually um, do not, in a way, um, have the right to claim uh, in a way uh, anything from you as well. Yeah, yeah. all right. Um, if anybody that's interested, uh, please, uh, like I said, um, contact me. Mm -hmm. um, because all of you are Veronica's friend, uh, you are also my, uh, you are also my friend. Uh, there, there will be a discount. All right. Uh, contact me over at, uh, I think I have my email. So my, my, my email is contact at Dr. Devon Chua, all right? My Facebook is uh, at Dr. Devon Chua, all right, okay. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to, in a way, get me at other uh, things, uh, my books, uh, my first book was uh, The Art of Determination. My second book is The Prisoner of Hope. My third book is currently on the way, all right? I have also another online program, all right? That is called Shift Your Mindset, unlock your potential. And, and, and again, if, if any of you are interested in this, uh, please um, contact my administrator, all right? Okay, and, and then this, this website, uh, this email is admin at Dr. Yeah, right. um, other than that, I, I think um, I am done. Um, is, is there any questions that anybody wants to ask? All right, any questions? Do we have, any, do we, do we have time for, for, for questions? Uh, it's already um, 7.50. Uh, we will have questions um, maybe towards the end. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, shall we get all the speakers get ready to be able to do your closing first? Yeah, so let me just share my slides. Huh? So thank you very much, um, Dr. Darren. Thank you. Thank you very much. All of you has been very, very much inspired by Dr. Darren and uh, how he really overcome his physical, his mental, and his emotional condition to be who he is today. It's all about mindset. It's all about choice, right? So thank you very much once again, uh, Dr. Darren. And um, for the, all the speakers, um, as you know, I shared two sessions. I shared about Miracle Energy of Life. I shared about Miracle Water of Life. So uh, if you want to come to Adelphi to have your uh, free uh, energy analysis, you're most welcome to make appointment with us and also bring your drinking water for us to test for you. And uh, Dr. Michael is not able to join us. So he is doing um, a floor plan audit for you. Today is the last day that you can submit your floor plan for free, all right? So at least get to know how toxic your home environment is. So he's able to audit um, the amplitude of the geopathic stress that you are staying in, all right? We have people who submitted to us their geopathic stress is so toxic, so toxic that it is destructive. It is destructive to your health, to your wealth, as well as to your relationship. So in order to enjoy quality of life, we must make sure that our environment is healthy. Then we are able to enjoy deep sleep and enjoy good wealth and also good relationship, all right? So don't underestimate this um, environmental health, okay? So the next speaker that I want to invite will be Elaine Cole. Are you here, Elaine Cole? Yeah, yes. Yes, she shared about learn simple like key tools to feel better instantly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I think during my session, I shared um, quite a number of techniques that you can use uh, using the like key tools. And I've also posted in the Facebook. So I think, um, I think there's a lot of uh, speakers who have uh, shared a lot of, um, you know, um, the science behind stress and, um, I think everyone is aligned about the mind-body connection. And if I will have to leave um, one word, it would be everything starts from inside. So anything that triggers you from the outside, um, I would encourage you to really look what's within you. 
and also have the awareness of uh, what's going on because it's with the awareness that you think will, you will be able to change. Everything can change because everything is energy and in everything it's about frequency. So um, I'd like to take this opportunity to really thank uh, Veron and team for really creating this community of like-minded individuals where we have so many um, you know, um, talents here who have, you know, shared. There are so many ways for us to take care of ourselves, our body. And I think it's really a matter of um, who resonates with you or like, you know, which technique um, that people have shared um, resonates with you. And really, besides um, listening to all of us, maybe everyone can set like um, an action point from today onwards to actually take the action to do something, be it like um, pivoting to positive thoughts or making certain choices that you've been uh, putting off for a very long while. Just take um, one simple action um, to just move forward. And for me, I do uh, offer coaching programs and I've also put together three packages for this summit, which I've also posted in the Facebook group. So um, if this body of work that I'm doing um, calls to you, um, just feel free to contact me. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you for your closing speech. And now we have the next uh, speaker, uh, Will. Uh, Will uh, shared about sounds for living and the influence of sound on our mental, emotional, and physical state. Shall we invite Will to share your closing speech? Uh, unmute yourself, uh, Will. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, being here tonight as well. Um, and thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you, Veronica, for organizing this uh, summit and the invitation with all the other uh, wonderful speakers that have shared their knowledge and their um, work in support of uh, wellness for uh, people in general. Um, as mentioned, I'm working with uh, sound and vibration to help people on an emotional, mental, and physical and spiritual level um, to move into a, a well-being that is balanced and coming back into a neutral state. Uh, shared, during my talk, I shared with you as well uh, how our internal sound system uh, works the same way as receiving sounds from external sources. So. What Elaine mentioned just now as well, and I think a lot of speakers have been talking about this, our mental state, our mind, is one of the leaders in how we create wellness for ourselves, are able to create wellness for ourselves and a balanced health for ourselves internally uh, on all levels. So we need to start uh, being kind to ourselves first to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, I will keep it brief. I, um, anybody interested to join for sessions, I run weekly sessions in a, a wellness center called Basic Essence uh, every Tuesday evening at the moment. I uh, facilitate private sessions as well for individuals who are interested in um, addressing personal challenges. I work with couples as well, especially in this time uh, where a lot of people are working from home and under, uh, under extra stress uh, because of working uh, be in the same space on a whole day. Um, so there is an increase in relationship challenges as well at the moment. So I'm working with uh, um, the couples. <clears throat> One example for today, I worked with a cancer patient actually to uh, support the person in um, creating a calm state. Um, oftentimes people with cancer, I've worked with people with cancer before, um, not so much to immediately heal them, but it, of course, that would be a, a nice uh, given, but it's mainly to support them on a mental basis to create a calm state, to find peace internally and find stillness. With that moment of stillness and the acceptance, uh, what they are moving through, they can develop new strength. So it's personal Hello. strengthening and empowerment. There's something what, what Darren mentioned just now as well, as well the empowerment of There's still uh, a some person. more chicken rice, too. Somebody Chick is... Would you want? Um, somebody must be muted. 
Okay. Was Wendy? I think. Wendy, I think. Wendy, is it? Ah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, as Darren mentioned, um, uh, personal uh, empowerment, personal empowerment, is important for uh, for somebody to gain strength and to grow through um, uh, betterment into betterment on, on a, any health basis. Yeah. So this also works for people with depression and any uh, challenges that people are facing. Um, so yeah, that's what I would like to leave it with. Thank you uh, very much for organizing this, Veronica. All and right. for getting everybody together. Thank you, thank you. And the power of sound, uh, until you experience it, then you understand what Will is talking about. Yes. Because, um, uh, uh, during Will's presentation, you only share, share, share. If you don't experience it, you won't understand what he's talking. All right, well, the next speaker. Was, oh, sorry. Yeah, the next speaker is Adrian Lim, Lim Peng An. And uh, he shared about strategies for psychological and emotional wellness using BPSS. Shall we welcome Adrian? Adrian, are you here? Hi. Hi. Okay, yeah, you want to share everyone? screen? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sharing screen already. Can you, yeah, can you yeah, see we my can screen? See. Yes, we yeah. can. So I actually left this for the last, but I think it was too much time uh, I covered. So I'm just giving you this, this uh, uh, sharing about what, what we are going through all right now, and maybe in the distant future, not only immediate future, what we are going experience, experiencing are fluid, and we need to have faith and hope. And what does this acronym stands for? Right? F, faith, that we are all going through, this is sense of fear, uncertainty, the loss, uncertainty, instability, you know, anytime things can increase, God today with zero, right? No one has COVID locally, but we wouldn't know, you know, across the border, there are thousands uh, are being infected. And D is doubts. So we are in a fluid situation. Things are uncertain, fearful, loss, having a sense of loss, instability, and lots of doubts that we're going through. For what can we do about it? We need to have faith. And what does faith stands for? Right? It has two meanings. Right? Both are faith in our faith in God and, our, and what we do in our, our religion. We need to have focus. What we need to focus on, right? That will be helpful and not to do everything, but what we need to zoom in on, just like a laser beam, just like uh, the sun. You know, using through the magnifying glass. Action, we need to take positive action. And remember, we need to make our decisions what we can influence, not every other stuff. Be intentional. Have a focus, action, and intentional, right? What we want to do within our abilities and given the resources that we have. We need to have timing which means we have to set routines, right? And routines is what keep us in an instable, uncertain environment a bit more stable. And finally, we need to have hope, okay? And what is hope? So we have faith, and what is actually hope? Hope is, hold on, this phase will end. This right? phase will end. <laughs> yes, hope, it's hope. All, everything will come to pass, right? Yes. Okay, even death, we will, we will hit death one day. But until then, we need to hold on. Yes. Right? Okay, yes. so that's me. Did, did you have a screenshot? Everything I put laid out very clearly. Um, I do holistic work. Yes, I covered the bio, psycho, social, spiritual. I've covered, I work with over 3,000 clients from 1,300 families, right? From, from palaces to the shelter of my, that are my clients live with. I've seen so much more in my 29 years. I'm privileged that I learned so much from my clients and families that I want to share what they can do better in our lives. From the young, as you can see, I, I work from, for couples, especially in the family, children, teens, young adults, uh, persons with special needs, and elderly, right? And I work not at, at their home, home. I go to their home because that is where life is, begins, and continue, right? I also do supervision for psychologists, counselors, social workers, training, uh, uh, all sorts of stuff, whether it's mental wellness, stress, uh, conflict management, and all, and psychological coaching, 
right? And this is a lot of this coaching is is using uh, evidence based practice, right? There are so many type of coaches in the world. Okay, you know, I know Mind Valley have their own coaching certification, but this is here we begin where you are. Wherever you are, it's so very important to begin where we are. There's a basic of social work value that I, I am a registered social worker. So I integrate my professional, three professional uh, uh, experiences and, and training into something that will work for families, right? You can contact me at the email there. You can go in my LinkedIn, it's all there uh, in my Facebook uh, for Family co uh, Site Council, right? And this is where. Um, Okay, I, I don't have I don't have packages and all that. I don't believe in packages for myself. I will always believe in the most important is the first session, the assessment session that we will work together to find. And I don't you do you think your son or problem your daughter problem? I will see you first as a parent, right? That is the key. You are the roots and the trunk of the your family tree. I work with you first. I'm not there. To, you're not giving me to outsource your kids to me. No. You are responsible. I'm helping and empowering you to know what you need to do so that you can do a better job. I'm teaching you how to fish rather than give you a fish. All right? So that's the, the principles are so very important. All right? And this is something uh, many clients have come back to me and say that, wow, well, one session, two session, how team side already, you know? All right? All right? And the okay. average sessions I do only six sessions. All right, then. Very All the nice. best. So thank you very much, Adrian. Uh, your sharing has been very insightful as well. Uh, a lot of um, family issues all start from home. Huh? Yeah. So right, the parents you. are always to be blamed if your children are, are not doing well. All right. So that's where uh, Adrian is there to help the parents to be better parents. Okay. All right. um, we have Teresa. Teresa uh, shared about be happy, be well. Shall we welcome Teresa? Thank you, Veronica. I think we should switch the titles around. It should be Be Well, then Be Happy, because we really have to work on ourselves. Um, like many, all the speakers have been saying that we need to be kind to ourselves, which is really essentially what I do as an international wellness speaker is to really inspire, you know, all my audience and my clients to start looking, uh, you know, ha having the awareness of looking at themselves, what it is through lifestyle choices, whether it's food or what I call lifestyle nutrition is, you know, um, your choices on a daily basis, your habits, how you breathe, how you sleep, how you eat, everything tell me something about where you're at in terms of your your life and your health and your well-being and where have you been. And then my job is with all that information, and if you come to me for a personal coaching session, is well, where do I what could I take this? But I think very importantly is that you know we all need to have, we all need to start with an understanding before we could set an intention. And then once we have an intention, then we could have a commitment and then we could take action, which is what I call ICA. So um, interesting enough that I haven't heard from any of the audience that, you know, who came to my talk because I did offer, um, you know, a very special rate, which you would get, a, you know, a wellness session with me. So we could start with an assessment with a food journal of, you know, one week. And I told you, you will be shocked <laughs> of what I could tell you uh, based on your food choices on a daily basis over the course of seven days, because we are creatures of habit, right? Um, and then it tells me about uh, your family history, your DNA, uh, why you choose certain foods, your personality, your moods, um, you know, where your health is at, or whether you have any physical or mental or emotional symptoms or indicators to tell me where you're at. Uh, a special price for all of your 150 USD suggested by Veronica and approved by Veronica. Um, I normally don't do these talks uh, in public. And so this has been such an exceptional opportunity. So thank you, Veron. And we've been great friends uh, since who knows when, 2014, when we <laughs> met in, um, in, um, in, uh, you know, in Singapore, and we did a great event together. And, and, and we've been growing ever since then. And, and this is what we're about. You know, we, we walk the talk, and we love for you to take action as well. So again, is, but firstly, you know, you can't take action until you have an understanding or, you know, you start with somewhere, you know, you need some indicators, you need someone to give you some guideline. So, you know, all the speakers right here are 
vastly experienced and you know I've been speaking for years and 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 educating coaching and I'm a yoga teacher I'm also a level two Reiki practitioner so I do I, I normally don't even promote healing on the side uh, but in the sessions um, I think in just having a conversation is healing in itself if that makes sense so if any one of you are looking for something like that and if you're looking for someone you know, a lifestyle educator. This is what I am, a lifestyle nutritionist. So again, everything lifestyle based, which is, I think some of us touch on as well, but I think most speakers have their own specialty. So if this resonates with you, you're welcome to get in touch with me. And earlier I was saying, I rarely do these talks in public or publicize them. It's only because a lot of these sessions, when I say I'm coming in to do a talk like be well, be happy. And when I start opening up the floor for questions, people like to share a lot of personal information with me. And this is why some of my business partners always ask for like a recording. And I'm sorry, I, you know, over the course of eight years or whatever, I don't have a recording of this, except for the times I've been on TV as a news reporter and anchor. And they're like, what? And this is the reason why, because I am uh, fully respectful of my client's privacy. And honestly, sometimes a lot of these talks become so personal because they have so much to share and I've said this in my talk before like when I spoke to my clients in Bangladesh last year about COVID you know people were sharing about their guilt sharing about the insecurities and sharing about being a negative energy or a, a you know a, a negative influence because they were once a victim and although they recovered they feel guilty and then that's when I start coaching them. It's uh, how do they shift their mindset? And so a lot of these sessions that we're talking about, I think it's like a combination integrative session of what all the speakers do here is on a live uh, style basis, on a daily basis, how could you, how could all of us, even me and Varan and Will, how do we all take better care of ourselves and ask ourselves, what energy do we, do we want to emanate out there I, you know, I use walk into a room or walk into your family room or walk into the office. How do you want to be? And this is what I mean. We should switch my, the, t the title of my talk around is be well, be happy because happiness is an inside job, which is something I've learned. Oh, devastatingly, but happily now learn those lessons is being happy from inside out because I could be well. And when I'm well, I could be happy and that's the light that I emanate wherever I go and I hope this can inspire you to take the next step to your next goal or whatever it is for your health for, uh, you know for your physical health your mental health and your overall well-being over to you Veronica this thank feels like so a live much. show <laughs> thank you so much Teresa uh, yeah thank you and now we have a next speaker Dawn Don Chien, she shared about creating Zen in anxiety. Shall we welcome Don? Yes. Hi, Veronica, and hi, everyone. It's Hello. nice to see many of you here again. Yeah, so again, it's about creating Zen in anxiety, especially during any time. Even pre-COVID, I think we always have a lot of life curveballs throwing, being thrown at us. So like what Theresa mentioned, it's all about taking action, Yeah. So we have learned so much from this summit, isn't it? Yeah, and I have learned so much from many other speakers and especially Veron. And I want to also acknowledge Veron because she, she is a very good example of making, turning things into action, into reality. And after knowing and so much knowledge we have learned through the summit, what are we going to do about it, right? So yes. I hope you remember about the emotions that I talk about that are related to the different parts of your body. So awareness is key because when you know that some pain is coming up, then you want to acknowledge that and know that why are you feeling this way? So by knowing, having that very first level of awareness is already a very good step. So don't think that you have to do like a million things to be, to be achieving what you think you need to achieve. One small step is already a big step. And as long as your heart heals, remember I said this, as long as your heart heals, your brain will quiet down and that's why your brain will, will have less chatter and that's where your intuition actually sharpens for you to lead the life you want. And remember I share about the one minute grounding exercise that is yes. actually meant to help you to get through your life. So yes, it's, it's about whenever you don't feel good, then how are you going to make use of this knowledge to help yourself? So knowledge is only power when you make use of it. And how to create Zen in anxiety 
of course, one of the first thing that I usually offer is to really treat that pain area with the meridian points that I've been talking about in my last talk. And that's where we, the meridian points are related to different organs. And that's how we will be able to feel better. When you feel better, you also feel calmer. So my point here for today is you want to create Zen in anxiety is taking the first step using the knowledge that you have been learning, not just from this summit, also applaud yourself and knowledge yourself because a lot of times we are always putting ourselves last, we are acknowledging ourselves last and then the heart also gets closed up. So it's about just opening your heart. Yes, and then just heal your heart. And one way is through the pain that you are facing, whether it's a physical or emotional or mental, acknowledge them, it is possible, it's doable. And so keep going and thank you for joining me. Yeah, over back, back to you, Veron. Thank you, Don. Thank you. So uh, Don also has a program that you can go and sign up. Uh, go and look up in the uh, Facebook group. Huh? Now, the next speaker is Ujiwala Baxi. She shared about three powerful sustainable diet mantras for mental health. Shall we welcome Ujiwala? Thank you, Iron, for uh, having me. And uh, very much a uh, warm welcome to all the fellow participants and the speakers. Now, it was an interesting talk that we had and we received good response from um, those who heard me. And there were quite many inquiries. We did hear a lot of people, of, of people interested in our program. So let me just quickly, um, you know, give a quick uh, look into something that we had shared. So first and foremost, the idea that we shared about the three powerful diet mantras. One was that. Um, now, let me just first share who am I? Because you must be wondering from where is she coming? <laughs> so I'm a registered dietitian. I'm a diabetes educator with 15 years of experience. I have my company, which is Ocean Cure Food Diet, and it's a Singapore licensed company because I was in Singapore for seven years and since last two years I'm practicing in India. So with my 15 years of experience, uh, I was sharing that there are three powerful mantras that you need to keep in mind. First and foremost, you want to make sure that your diet is not mimicked from someone else. It is your own very own diet. So as uh, uh, you know, we know that we are all unique in our uh, who like with like habits. So that so shall be your diet. So if you want to pick up something from the internet, you want to come pick up something that your friend is following, and then you want to follow. It's going to be a tricky one because you are not a guinea pig, first and foremost. Okay, so you want to have something which is as per your liking, as per your uh, routine, and as per your requirement, health requirement. The second mantra that we shared was all the food groups need to be included into your diet. So if you are following any specific diet which asks you to remove some kind of food group, like maybe completely chuck off the carbohydrates or the fats or, uh, you know, none of the diets have ever said that, okay, remove the proteins from your diet. So we all know proteins are important. So carbohydrates, fats, they are the ones which are usually targeted. Now, if we are looking at it from mental health perspective, uh, one of the key points that I had mentioned was you cannot ditch the carbohydrates when you are trying to take care of your mental health. This is very important for somebody who's wanting to sleep, has anxiety issues, has any of the other health, uh, mental health problems, depression, you know, clinically stated depression, you cannot combat your mental health by getting rid of carbohydrates because they are the ones which help you to actually calm down okay, mentally. What kind of carbohydrates we had shared it during the talk? Of course, if I start sharing here, it is going to be long. So I, do, I cannot share it here. But then, yes, just focus on complex carbohydrates. You want to not skip the fats because the fats in your diet are the ones which are going to be the connecting point for all the micronutrients and then stabilize the proteins and carbs in your diet. And the third and the last diet mantra was you need to rest well because if you are not resting well, you are not going to allow the diet to function for you effectively, specifically when we are looking at mental health problems. Okay, so one who rests well uh, is the one who is going to benefit from the balanced diet approach. So that is what you want to look at. Okay, so these are the three major diet mantras that we had shared, had shared case study. And we had also offered a, 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 a special price for somebody who wants to come to this platform to us for a one, a one month diet consultation you can feel free to reach out to us again uh, our usual one month package is for dollar 350 singapore dollar 350 
which we had offered for dollar two hundred and ten. And there are people who are reaching out to us. We have offered it to them. They have started their diet plans already. So if you are still thinking, still wondering whether it will be effective or not, trust me, it's a customized approach. It's nothing that you will be asked to starve till death or deprive in order to lose weight. So we losing weight is the last thing that you're going to focus on if that's not your goal. Okay, third, we are focusing on mental health. So uh, thank you, Veron, once again. And uh, beautiful platform. Keep doing good work, Veron, and keep ha keep keep having me. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, thank you, Ujwala. Thank you for your sharing once again. And uh, now we are going to the next speaker. Okay. Uh, remember, Ujiwala keeps stressing and stressing and stressing. Make food your friend. Huh? Don't go against food, okay? Don't go against your own food. Well, if you enjoy durian, please go for it. Okay, the next speaker is George. George Lee, she, he shared about using hypnosis to create an accomplice in life. George. Over okay, thanks. Thanks, Ron. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me. It's all good? Yes. Okay, good, good. Yeah, so, uh, well... Uh, it's really been a great pleasure, not only for my session of speaking, uh, especially tonight, I was able to meet up with all the other speakers. And um, thank you, Dr. Darren. Uh, I think your, your life story has absolutely changed, at least for me, because um, there is so much that people want in our, inside ourselves, in our inner self, that, um, that it's just up to us to waste it. So what's going to happen after tonight's session is one of the two will happen. Either you take action... Or you do nothing. So uh, <laughs> let's let's face it. It's it's either this or that. Because um, as what uh, as what um, Don had mentioned, I think Don was the one who mentioned it. Knowledge is power. Uh, it's only half right. Half right meaning to say that the knowledge is just potential power. Now, nothing has power until you put whatever you have into action. So being action, being actionable, taking action towards what you want, is pretty much what's going to get you the result. Uh, having that knowledge, unless your desire is just having knowledge and that's it. Well, uh, if that is the case, then uh, going through the whole submit is uh, pretty much 100% of what you need. But if you're really going towards a holistic uh, lifestyle, both mental and emotional wellness, then what I would suggest is uh, out of the 10, just, just do something. Just do something. Uh, pick up your phone, drop an email, whatever it is. Uh, get yourself to the next step. Uh, even buy a pillow and just have a good night's sleep. Uh, that, is also, that is also something that we should all do, right? So, yeah, I mean, uh, having said that, I'm, I'm really pleasure to be in this summit. Uh, thank you a lot. Uh, thank you very much, Veronica, for having me in, in this big family. And uh, the best part of it is, uh, other than sharing, I'm actually also learning. So I've learned from all the other speakers and thank you so much. And I really hope uh, the best for everyone here. And do, 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 please, please, please take action for your next phase of life, for your next phase of wellness. Back to you, Veron. Thank you. So no matter what age you are right now, age is only a number. You can be in your 70, 80, 90. You can still take action at this point of time while you're still breathing, all right? So the next one is... Uh, Mira, Mira, she shared about chemistry of bliss and she's in Netherlands. She's not able to join us, but she recorded the video. Hello, everyone. A big hello from the Netherlands. Yes, I'm still here. Um, we'll be traveling back to Singapore end of, uh, end of this month. Keeping my fingers crossed that my travel will be as smooth as possible. Thank you, Veronica, for this great opportunity to share with our participants the art of... Um, the art of going with the flow with proper breathing technique so as to bring out the happy hormones um, for great mental wellness. Like I said, it is if you want to have maintain a proper flow in our lives, it has to be everything together, mental, emotional, physical, everything together. But it all starts here, isn't it? Like I said, it's all in the mind. When you put in good thoughts in your mind as a habit, then life becomes less complicated, isn't it? That is when, um, you know, and when you put limiting thoughts in your mind, that is what you will get, that uh, life will not allow you to go forward. Everything you're going to step back, you know, we're creating more stress in our life. So we are creators, right? We have to create, so we create. So be creative, observe, 
observe what's happening around you observe what's happening to you listen sometimes sometimes we talk so much and we don't listen to the other person so the connection gets lost so try to listen listen to your body listen to your breathing and allow yourself to grow and go forward every day is a blessing so be grateful um and also be in awe of beauty around you mother nature i did share with you about connecting with nature and every time you connect with nature be in awe you know if like as if you are seeing it for the first time and uh, most importantly connect with yourself how do you connect with yourself with your breathing connect with your heart listen to the heartbeat and that's the connection we're talking about okay if you can connect with yourself you'll be able to connect with the others easily so I wish you all the very best. I know we don't have much time, but uh, if you have uh, any further questions, please feel free to message me or email me. My telephone number is eight one six three eight three zero three. Okay, eight one six three eight three zero three. We are in the group, so please do message me. Um, before I leave, I would like to share with you again two of my upcoming events. In um, so there'll be one in August. Uh, called the uh, Flow Detox Retreat for the Body, Mind, and Space. Mm, that's on the 14th. And uh, Flow Rejuvenating Sleep on the 17th of September. And these courses, like I said, it's $85 each. But if for all of you who have attended the summit, you only pay $75. Okay, the details are there on Facebook. I know some of you are not on that group. So if you message me, I will send you the details. All right. So, yeah. That's all from me at the moment. Uh, thank you all once again. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you, Veronica, once again. Um, I would say let's all breathe together and go with the flow. Bye-bye, everyone. See you all. All right. Bye. <laughs> so that is a sharing uh, by Mira. And uh, we are very grateful that she's able to do a video for us. Okay, now we are going back to our guest speaker. Is there any questions from the floor for Dr. Darren? or from, for any of the speakers. We are going to run over time, but this is the last closing submit. So let's uh, go for it. Any questions from the floor? Anybody? You can unmute yourself. You can type. Uh, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's your choice. You can type in the chat box or you can unmute yourself. Do you have any questions uh, for Dr. Darren or for any of the speakers in the Zoom room right now? Can I ask a question? Sure. <laughs> Ujiwala, this question is for you. Hi. Are you still in India? Yeah. Hey, I'm just curious. I mean, we, we obviously both share our, you know, our perspectives and experience on holistic nutrition. Um, you mentioned one of the mantras is include all food groups in our diet, right? So my question is, you know, I, I've been a vegetarian and vegan and all of that and flexitarian and whatever. So are you saying we should eat meat as well? Is that what you're saying? talk about food groups more from the theoretical aspect such as carbohydrates, proteins, fats, water, micronutrients. I types. got it. Okay. So of course, uh, if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, um, it's a preferred choice because that helps uh, to align a lot of chakras as well if you're a spiritual soul, which I uh, assume you are. So uh, for that reason, I think vegetarianism or veganism is possible, but uh, surely you don't need to uh, I missed that last part, Ujiwala. What was that last part? Um, the last part was that you don't need to, so when you want to match up your protein requirements, your intake, you don't need to force yourself to eat meat if you're not having that. Right, I see what you mean. Yeah. Only if the body calls for it, right? Awareness, <laughs> yeah. So it's somebody who is... Uh, used to eating meat since childhood and cannot give up. They have tried veganism, they tried vegetarianism and they just don't uh, find it uh, compatible for their own selves. Then there may be a way to create alkalinity with the non-vegetarian food including in their diet. Only if they choose to go along the vegan or the vegetarianism uh, path, they can go ahead. But, uh, it, you know, the struggle is always going to create a barrier in achieving health no goals. So one needs to be first more clear about what they want to achieve, whether they want to take that food. If they want to take that food, whether it's willingness in, in that zone to take vegetarianism or veganism. If not, 
uh, you don't need to force yourself and maybe if you wish to still you can take it gradually but mm. it's not overnight change like there are people who do it overnight you know they change their diet just overnight and then they struggle yeah. they get a lot of muscle ache and muscle loss that is not the right thing. Totally agree. It needs to be baby steps, like Don said, and and I talk about that as well. Is it's I think people think about it, it just because you're vegetarian or vegan doesn't mean you're healthy. You have to do it right, and you have to make sure you get all the nutrients in there, and and that's what Ujiwala and I do <laughs> is make sure you get it right. You know, um, so that's that. Right yeah. That, you know, uh, veganism, and this was an article that I had uh, you know uh, put up on Straits Times. When I was in Singapore, I would shout for this article where whether veganism is so healthy that it can really transform life. Yes, it can if done rightly. Otherwise, veganism can also have a negative impact because somebody who is eating meat, they are still going to feel hungry, and to match up their hunger, uh, they are going to go big on carbs. They are going to go big on maybe junk food if they are so used to it. So you need to do it rightly if you have to follow this uh, thing coach. Yeah, and I, I, I think one of the things you were saying is, and, and Varan was saying, eat durian if you want to. And, and, you know, I've been through all of that stuff. And I think many of us would if we're looking at like, oh, you know, the whole wide world is going vegan and I should. You only should listen to your body, which is the message that we're trying to get here with all the aspects that we've been talking about is learn awareness, is learn to listen to yourself. And this is what would you, Wala and I tell people, and, and I talk about this a lot and people go, how do you know what your body is wanting you to eat, Trees? I'm like, it just does. You yeah. know, like tonight, I just wanted some Korean sesame thing wrap. And, you know, I rushed home because I was doing a, a culinary nutrition workshop today and I just got home and that's what I wanted to eat because I ate a lot of uh, basmati, brown basmati fried rice <laughs> today, vegetarian and all that was great. But that's what my body wanted. It's all like beautiful. Like I think I had about 10 colors tonight, but all just fresh veggies and, and corn from the vendors that on my way home. And I, I was excited. I was going to like tell Ver Veron I couldn't make it, but I was so excited. I was like, I, I'm going to make this, you know? And I did. And that, that when you when you listen to your body, you get the right energy and that, you know, right. If you eat the wrong food, it gives you less lethargy and you don't feel good, you know. So that's a, that's another sign is listen to your body. Veron. Oh, no. <laughs> is there any questions on the floor? Now, is there a George Xiao here? George, are you here? George Xiao? Uh, he's a pastor. Is he here? George? Oh, George, you are here. Can you hear me? George, would you like to close up? Uh, what, what, what have you learned throughout the whole submit? Oh, he's not here. Okay, anybody else would like to share? What have you learned throughout the submit? Or uh, what, 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 is there any other questions that you want to ask Dr. Darren? Oh, Dr. Darren, do you have any comment? Uh, Veron, Veron, yes. yes. Uh, I have a question to ask. Uh, it could be to any of the uh, speakers. It's about depression. Okay. Okay. How, how could one uh, you know, uh, confirm or make sure that uh, is it uh, is is there really a clinical depression or everything is your mindset? Okay. Um, yeah, uh, if, if, um, if we could, like, like what Dr. Darren mentioned, a lot of things actually is your choices. So if we could, uh, you know, make the right choices, have a good mindset, you know, uh, then unlikely we can be depressed. But then yet, uh, in the real world, there are a lot of, uh, in prevalences of depression that, that, Lead to that, that can be suicidal, and uh, there is often the you know, the need to take like um antidepressant. But my point here also is how did the doctor decide on the antidepressant? Because it seems like a trial and error. You know they have to start you somewhere. Of course they may have evidences. I mean based on some evidence, but could, sometimes some people being misdiagnosed. Okay. Uh, yeah. Darren, you want to you want to answer this? Sure. Um, so I, I think this question is from uh, Yem Yem Yao. Yeah? 
Sulam, I think. Sulam. Sorry, sorry, Sulam. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. Sulam. So, so, so th there is a distinct difference between depression and clinical depression. So, um, so I, I, I think a lot of times when doctors use the word depression, they are actually referring to the word clinical depression. And, and when, when we go into, or rather when, when the doctor says the word clinical depression, they are actually talking about hormones that is actually in a way out of whack with the body. Um, as opposed to um, the word depression that is commonly used uh, in our sort of like layman language, whereby um, if, if, if a man or, or a lady is just feeling a little bit depressed, or if a man or a lady is feeling a little bit uh, sad, uh, sometimes we call him depressed. Um, but, but, but for doctors, when they, when they use the word depressed, they are very clear. Uh, it is because uh, they have, in a way, uh, uh, their, their hormone is a little bit below a, 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 a normal va va value that is safe. Uh, that is safe. So, um, so there are certain uh, hormones that basically regulates our emotions. And, and sometimes when our emotions are irregulated, a lot of our choices that we make are, in a way, um, made wrongly. So, so a lot of times, people who are depressed, they are actually right, making a choice based on a so-called logical, uh, logical uh, decision that they think that they are having, even though in a way they are, uh, they are depressed. So, so when you are, when you are uh, clinically depressed, you are actually making decisions that are actually uh, not very sound because in a way, your mind is not sound. So, which is why the doctor will ask you, I think it's safer for you to, in a way, take uh, certain peers for maybe two or three weeks to sort of like to, to, to mitigate those, those levels, in, uh, those, uh, those, those hormones, so that in a way, it makes you in a way in, in a safer state for you to make uh, better choices. Uh, this, of course, clinical depression is different from the word depression that uh, layman people use which is more of like saying that, oh, I am sad, I am very sad, I'm happy. That one um, uh, it is very different. Uh, so, feeling sad, feeling emotionally, uh, in a way, not well, that in a way, I agree, uh, our mindset plays a very, very important role. But if you are at the clinically depressed state, then I think sometimes um, your, your mindset, even though you are very, very strong weird, uh, sometimes it's much safer to take certain pills just to be on the safer side. Yeah, if, if, if this helps. Uh, what about um, uh, yeah, yeah, psychologists? Um, Adrian, yes. okay. about this? Um, if you want to, I mean, what does a psychiatrist, I mean, the person only can do the, the, the diagnosis is actually the psychiatrist. Lah. Right, and they use the DSM for the, the the diagnostic manual for mental illness. Right, and basically they go through a checklist, which has been done for forty over years. Right, of, of data from all over the world. For example, I just give you the list uh, here. Right, for the past two weeks, have you been feeling low, set or set? Number one, two, felt more or tired than usual, or have less energy during the day. Three felt upset or annoyed at a little things, right? Four, have trouble thinking, concentrating or making decisions. Five, have no appetite, have been not been eating too well or too much. Six, worried that you might hurt yourself or others, right? And, and in wanting to die. Having uh, trouble enjoying things and that used to be fun. Uh, felt like you have no one to talk to felt that you just make it through the day, uh, felt feeling uh, unworth, worthless and hopeless, and having headaches, backaches, and all the other stuff, right? These are just checklists, right? You must have this for a certain number of um, uh, number of symptoms, uh, varied over two weeks, and it have been longer than that, okay? Um, the psychiatrist will make a diagnosis, okay? Yeah, so, so and there are other things, I just give you an idea of how does a psychiatrist do it, right? And as a psychologist, 
Um, this is for the clinical psychologist. Uh, I'm a counseling psychologist. The clinical psychologist will work together with the psychiatrist, who, and the psychiatrist only can give the medication, right? And the, the clinical psychologist will work out the, the therapeutic uh, processes, right, and strategies with the patient. Okay, so they work together, right? And for me, how I work with them is really, I go much deeper than that. I will go into their genealogy, their family of origin, their traumas, past uh, experiences, and all the milestones in their life, not only themselves, but their family. That's why I include the parents. Even if a, a middle-aged couple come, I will try also to speak to their parents who are in their 70s or eighties because I want to know the link, right? There's something called, be, that's why I say it's biopsychosocial spiritual. There's much more than to it. And it has to be holistically assessed, right? And um, in my experience, I have, I have challenged psycho psychiatrists and say some of their diagnosis, right? And, and to, for at least one, they have the courage to say, sorry, I made a mistake. I asked <laughs> her to diagnose again. All right, thank you. So I suppose the patient themselves must be aware that they want help. The patient yes. must be aware that they are seeking for help. Then the, any of these therapy will be able to come in. Elaine, you want to yeah. comment? Elaine, do you want to comment? Yeah. So um, maybe just to share also, because I, I was, um, due to the stress of my work, I also experienced a very mild depression. As in like, I, I recognize it myself because I've been doing a lot of personal development work for a very long time learning different modalities so it came to a point where I would just like sit down and like you know I'll just hear you know these are signs of like uh, depression and like the chest is like very tight and uh, sometimes you just feel like very hopeless you don't know what to do so I was using a lot of like tools like EFT you know a lot of like um, uh, energy work stuff that I was doing it, it was it was like a roller coaster up and down and um I was like just asking the universe for like help as well. And I, I said, you know, can you just show me something that would actually um, bring, me, bring me out of this particular dark place. So then that's how I chanced upon uh, light key healing. And um, miraculously within like less than 10 minutes of doing a certain protocol using the light key uh, high vibrational symbols and the frequencies, I actually became very happy. It was like totally like I was totally amazed that like within less than 10 minutes and whatever I've been like going through for the past six months, it totally like just disappeared. And that's why, um, you know, I've been um, lapping up, you know, this um, body of work because um, it's so fast and so effective that um, I find that uh, many people in other countries like India, uh, people that I've been working with in India, you know, uh, Japan, um, they are very receptive to all these things. And what they are demanding is something that is very fast and effective. Somehow when I come to like uh, speaking with Singaporeans, I don't know, is it because like we've been conditioned that, you know, it has to be the hard way. It has to be, this <laughs> is too simple. Sometimes it's like, it's too, too so to simple. <laughs> That it's like you, you like, you're very skeptical, like, you know, does this work? But I'm telling you that uh, this body of work is practiced like in like 90 over countries, and like people are like seeing so amazing results. So it is something very experiential. That's why there is no words that I can put into it. And that's why my session that I had was very, very experiential. It is for you to experience and see how fast it shifts um, your vibration. Yep. Because, yeah, and basically everything is energy. So once you are vibrating at a higher energy level, everything that you attract to you changes. So it's yep. always like what uh, Dawn, like what uh, Teresa said, it is an inside job. And... Yeah, so I really, really encourage um, every one of you to take one action after this because it's very easy to listen about the theory, the sharing, but if let's say it's something that you're choosing to make, uh, to have a better quality of life, to live a happier life, then yeah, just take one action step 
after the day. Yeah. Yes. So like Elaine uh, shared during her sharing, like you are in the dark room. How do get how do you get the to be able to see? Is to go to the switch. So the light key is like switching on that switch. So the whole place will be brightened and then you know where to go. Your direction is very clear. You know, it's so simple as that switch. So what about um what about Dawn? Do you want to comment on this, Dawn? Because she herself went through a very bad uh, panic attack as well. Dawn, do you want to share? Yes, thanks, Faron. Uh, yeah, so to address Suyam's query also, if you feel that you are not resonating with the term depression, it is okay. Because to be very honest, men and women's brain are wired very differently. Yeah, and I must say that in the normal mundane world now, the tools that are being used are developed by, by men most of the time. And so sometimes what worked for men may not work for women totally. And behind depression, okay, there are many, many other kind of emotions. And my work is actually to identify the block. And all you need to do is to just talk about your issues one time, what caused you to be feeling depressed, because depressed is not your word. If depressed is not something that you resonate with, because you feel that it's like a label that is so negative, then it's not actually your block. Behind your block could be like sadness, or because um, I don't feel good enough, or someone is always better than me. Those beliefs actually lead to what you are feeling low. And those are the blocks that are already in you. The moment you think about it, the moment it affects you for more than seven to 10 days, the block is already in there. And the moment negative ha situations happen, it's going to trigger. And when it triggers, it's like it keeps la laying on additional layers of negative emotions. And that's where you it will get you to a very, very deep pit kind of feeling, feeling, feeling down. And when you go see doctor and the doctor will say that, okay, you are depressed, which is normal <laughs> because this is how the normal world operates, but you don't feel that it's so bad. Yeah. And that's why when I had anxiety behind it was like a lot of anger and stuff. And I thought that if I don't deal with my anxiety, I would get into depression. I could really feel where I was getting to. And then when I found the two creatrix, which is what I use now, it actually removed all these blocks and negative beliefs for good. You can actually Google creatrix and you can actually find tons of testimonials out there of women who have gone through just one session to remove these negative blocks for good. Yeah, so check it out um, because it is possible to remove this and otherwise I won't be able to be here today talking to you all as well. And that's all because we discovered that women's brain and men's brain are wired very differently. And so you need a different tool to serve the women and to help the women. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank yeah. you. How about uh, George? Do you want to comment on this, George? Subconscious. Okay, uh, well, I am a scientific and at the same time an artistic person. So I'm just going to combine the two together. Well, um, of course, uh, uh, following uh, Sulam's, is it Sulam's? Yes, Sulam. yeah, Sulam's question, right? Uh, now, when you are diagnosed with depression by a psychiatrist, that's a medical diagnosis. So that is absolutely science. However, if you are there to defy the doctor's diagnosis, okay? So the doctors, for, for example, the doctor said that you have, you have depression. Okay, good. Thanks, doctor, for telling me something that I don't know. Then if you will ask the doctor, what's next? Now, the question is a lot of patients, they are just trying to look for an answer. Just, they, are, they are looking for this word called convincer. They, are, they need to be convinced that they are depressed. So the best person to convince them that they're depressed, they are down with depression is none other than the, doc than the doctor. My, my, my more immediate or practical question is now those coaches out there you will agree with me so what if you are diagnosed with depression what's next what do you want to do do you want to live the rest of your life with this label with this uh, psychological stigma of being a depressed person or do you want to get out of it now if you want to get out of it that is where the belief starts to shift you out from a depressional patient and when you don't have the belief that you are down with depression then who is there to tell you that you have depression? Now that <laughs> is, a, is, a, is a shift and a reframe of your belief. And that is nothing scientific. It's absolutely everything artistic. Who is there? I mean, who dare to defy what the doctor says? Who dare to defy what the judge says? Who dare to defy what a lawyer or an accountant says? These are professionals. But then again, whatever they say, look at it in content, look at it in detail and ask yourself, what good does it do to you? Now, if he has nothing that's absolutely good, then I would go with uh, what the coaches will do, what Dr. Darren will say, 
choose what you believe that helps you get what you want. That's it. That's life, right? So you decide what you want for yourself. It's all about choices. It's about it's all about mindset. And um, my very last statement that I want to share with uh, everyone in the group is this. Now, be very careful with what you are focusing on. If you're focusing on depression, that's it. You're depressional. If you're focusing on getting out of depression, meaning looking for a way out, that's it. It's your light at the end of the tunnel because whatever you focus on expands. So please, please, please focus on the right thing. Right to you, not right by someone else. That's all I have. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. So he, uh, uh, George always talk about the subconscious that we, we never use, which is 90% of the mind. And what about Will? Will, do you want to comment on this? Uh, how, therapy, yes. how does sound therapy help? Well, um, let me start with something else first. As some of us here as practitioners have uh, gone through certain episodes, also have I. Um, I have an article on my website that talks about depression, how I got out of it early, quickly, naturally. This is based on my personal experiences. Um, I'm not writing so much on the details of what I went through, but uh, focusing on what George has mentioned, how to get out of it. Um, so there's a level of awareness as well that needs to come in place first before you start, can start addressing something. And you need to, need to accept that you are depressed. That you're, you're, that there's what these points that were mentioned earlier um, that you can answer for yourself and, and also the feeling uh, like suicidal ideas, all that will be a, an add on to how you can establish your situation. Um, <clears throat> for myself, I, I was um, dealing with uh, paranoia, depression, all kinds of different aspects of uh, mental challenges. Uh, triggered by an event, personal event, that suddenly kicked in 20 years of unresolved challenge issues in my life. And that, uh, that was uh, so an accumulation over time that got triggered by one event that sent me into the deep end. And uh, so what I've written about is how to get out of this. It's your mindset. It's a change of mindset. And that's where I'm focusing on and what I mentioned as well in my uh, my talk, your internal sound system. That is what needs to address, be addressed. And external sounds will be able to help you to calm down and come into a relaxed state. But ultimately, you need to be focused on where you want to go. And for me, one of the elements was creating personal mantras and go for walking meditations. Now, I live in a, in a green area, Potsdam Road area. And so I can walk at night I can make a few rounds, a few kilometers walk, and then holding on to positive affirmations that could start changing my orientation towards uh, a better, um, a feeling better, stronger, and not, not focusing at all, not paying attention at all to everything that brings me down, but purely focusing on what strengthens me. And that's what was mentioned just now as well. That is the orientation, and that's the only way, the main way to get out of this kind of period. Another choice I made, although I received some support from practitioners, uh, friends of mine um, uh, who saw me uh, in, in this state, I didn't, I didn't open up at all in the beginning uh, about this, but friends of mine saw me in this state and they started addressing a few things. And so I have been uh, receiving some support of other practitioners based on more spiritual and uh, holistic uh, approaches. But I did not want to see a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Reason, uh, if I want to make myself, if I'm working in this field, I need to be able to uh, help myself out of this without medication, without the help of uh, a regime that is not part of my belief system. And so that is something that I'm not rejecting that. People need to decide for themselves what works best for them. But for my purpose at that point in time, the, 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 the conscious effort to realizing in what kind of situation I ended up in at that point in time, and also realizing that the reason why the purpose for my life here on this planet is to help others. I need to be able to help myself first before I can 
address other people as well. So if you're able to move yourself through this period, you will be able to support other people as well because it comes from a point of understanding. And now what was mentioned earlier as well, of course, there are different levels of depression, different variants. As all, Nobody is the same. Nobody goes through the same thing. But there are certain aspects, specific aspects that will have a lot of, um, com- find a lot of common ground. So that's something I'm highlighting as well in, in my post. And one of these things is that um, you cannot advise somebody with depression. People will not take, uh, and, and that's my experience, and also some friends of mine who have gone through this, they, you will not take on advice easily. If over time, it may happen. You might sh- you may shift, but you need to, and people who are finding themselves in the environment of people who are depressed need to become aware that you cannot force anybody to become better. It's giving space and being there for the person whenever that person needs help and taking, uh, being aware of how this person starts moving through life further into the dark side or uh, moving towards the light and then finding moments or to anchor that. Uh, so when, when a person moves more into the darkness, be there, uh, monitor, but don't try to force things to change because that will push people away. So these kind of things are important for everybody to understand. And that's from a point of, so anybody of you as well who've gone through this, may, may uh, recognize this, that there is no way you can force people to change. So you, the change need to come from the person yeah. self. Yeah. The other thing is as well for anybody who goes through depression, have patience with yourself. Be kind to yourself every day. And if you want to spend the whole day in bed, spend the whole day in bed. <laughs> no, seriously. Because this point that moment that you're allowing yourself to that space to spend the whole day in bed will move and with, but with the intention to help yourself yeah it's not just spending the day in bed because you but it's with the intention where everything works with the intention is pulling you through so when you're when you set the intention that you have made the choice to make better then spending a day in bed is okay because that day in bed is part of your intention to get better and so you're giving yourself the space, allowing yourself the space for that to happen. And eat, but make a point that you eat three times a day at least. It's, it's a deliberate action. It's part of the intention to become better. Yeah, so taking, keep taking care of yourself and take note of that. It can be hard but it is necessary. And then once you have made that choice day by day, it becomes easier. So I had set myself the goal because I believe that we can change our mind uh, and everything in our, our belief system, our brain operation within three months. So I've set, I've given myself the time for of about three months. And that's what, when, when the change happened. Yeah. So I was, <laughs> I was, I was invited, so a few months before that, I was invited to be the best man of a good friend of mine uh, on his wedding. I didn't even believe that he was getting married. Yeah, so he had sent out the invitations and all that. But that, and that was about four months before uh, he got married that I ended up in this period. I was uh, ultimately organizing the stack night and um, being there at his wedding as well just because I kept moving and with a strong belief system. And uh, what I mentioned earlier, you have to change your internal sound system towards a positive movement all the time. You want to work towards the solution, not, not anchoring yourself into what is wrong with you. Yeah. All right, so thank you so much. Is there any last question? Because it's already uh, coming to nine o'clock. It's super, super late tonight. So is there any other last questions that you want to ask? Uh, There is one that is in the chat. It says, could the root cause of depression something spiritual or lack of belief that there is a God bigger and more powerful than our circumstance? His words give life or hope. Can it be spiritual? (laughs) 
Yes. Yep. I agree. That's why there's in my BPSS, there's a spiritual element, right? Let me just share very one, one short uh, case. This person, this uh, middle-aged person was sent to me, right? Um, and I just had one session with him, right? And after, during, towards the 34th minute or 35th minute of the session, he took out from his back a dagger. Okay, Adrian, I don't need this anymore. You take over from me, All right? I was stunned, of course, right? Because before that, he has prepared everything, the will, the money, the bank, everything for the wife. He was prepared after the session. He just said, I just give one more session, one more chance, right? To decide whether to live or to die, right? And, and, and I spoke to him, and I spoke live to him, basically, right? Uh, and he was actually, after that, if it doesn't work, he will go somewhere high in Singapore, slit his throat and jump down, right? And this is a very respectable person in Singapore, okay? And of course, I can't reveal. And, and these are the situations that, that we need to know Right, because even our voices, what we say is also sound. Right, I spoke, used the BPSS, checked out everything. He ha he has multiple, he has chronic pain, he has multiple medical condition, a lot of issues with his life, um, some work issues, and all those things. Right, but the question that he and he asked me is, uh, I asked him back, what is it that got you to say yes to life and no to death. He says, what that you have spoken to me that have resonated with my own beliefs, right? And we don't share the same religion, by the way, right? But it is something about connecting with the person in front of you, right? And this is something that I just like to share. This happened only two years ago, right? And he says to me and to everybody that he knows in his family, Adrian saved my life. And, I, and I'm still with my family. Right? Yeah. So this is something very, very um, life-giving. Right? And but how do you do it, uh, Adrian? How do you do it? What do you tell him? Lots of things. Right? But I basically connected with him heart to heart. What I call the heart light. Right, you know the ET heart like the sum, yes. right? Yes. Right, and it's really resonating with his mind and his heart together, right? Okay. okay. And this is something that um, uh, there's a lot of things I can share. I mean, this yeah, but but it's and I journey him through another year, right? Because he wants to build up to the point he's uh, in his retirement, he's starting business, right? He has started his business. Right, I give him the, the belief that he can do it. Right, whether you call it mindset, perspective, right, change of mind, but the whole idea is journeying with that person, but know and begin where they are. A loss of respect, right, understanding. He felt that I understood him within that few minutes that I understand him. All his life, he said, "You have no one have understood me more than you, All right? And you, how long only have you been with me?" And he was that's what got him to to say no to death and yes to life. Yeah, I just want to share this in interesting. All right, it's already nine o'clock, so I want to thank all the speakers. I want to thank uh, Dr. Darren Chua. I want to thank all the participants here, and thank you for making this. Mental and Emotional Wellness Summit, a great success. Thank you very much once again. And I want to say a good night to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Veronica. Thank, thank you. you thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Nice meeting all the speakers and yes, uh, good the night. audience. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Dr. Darren. Thank you, all the speakers. Thank you. Thank you, Alan.